In this Blender tutorial for beginners, I will show you how I work with metaballs and make a motion graphic animation. In Blender, a metaball object are implicit surfaces, meaning they're mathematical formulas that are calculated on the fly by Blender. They exist procedurally and are not defined by vertices or control points. Each metaball is a distinct object, but when they come into close contact with one another, they'll begin to interact and blend together, just like raindrops. Metaballs can be added just like any other object in Blender. There are five primitive metaballs that can be used ball, capsule, plane, ellipsoid, and cube. When I add a metaball into the scene, notice that there's two rings around it. The innermost ring is the area of influence, and the outermost ring is the selection ring. In edit mode, the influence ring becomes green, and the selection ring is red or pink when it's selected. Under the metaball object data properties tab, we have three panels. The top panel, the metaball, we have the viewport resolution and the render resolution. Both of these options should be familiar to you. If I change the viewport resolution, you will notice that lower numbers increase the resolution, making the shape smoother. And higher numbers decrease the resolution, changing the shape of the metaball. The render is simply the resolution the metaball will be rendered at in final rendering. The influence threshold defines how much of the metaball's surface influences other metaball. This applies to the entire family of metaball. Whenever you add new metaballs, they become part of a family, essentially linked, inseparable object. If I add a second metaball, notice that when the second metaball is within the green circle, the influence area, the two metaballs will appear to join. If I change the threshold, the influence area changes, and the metaballs begin interacting at a different place in the scene. Update on edit our modes of visualization. Always will fully display the metaball during transformations. Half will display the metaball at half its viewport resolution. Fast will not display the metaball during transformations. Never will never show the metaball mesh. It is only visible when rendered. The second panel is the texture space options. To demonstrate these options, I'll first add a simple material to the metaball. Under the shading workspace, I add a Musgrave texture node. And a color ramp. I'll connect both of these nodes to a mix RGB node. which is then connected to the base color of the BSDF shader. And then I change the colors on the color ramp. Auto Texture Space will adjust the metaball's texture space automatically when transforming the object. 
So if I change the scale of the meta ball, notice that the material is automatically changing. If I unchecked auto texture space, I can define the location of the material on the meta ball. If I select all three axes, change them to two, notice that the material changes location. I can also affect the size of the material by changing the texture space size. The third panel is the active element options, which can be accessed while in edit mode. I can change the type to any of the five primitives available in Blender. Stiffness controls the influence range for individual metaballs. If I duplicate the metaball and move it so we can see the influence of the two, if I change the stiffness, Notice that the influence of the selected meta ball changes. The radius controls the physical size of the meta ball. This works the same as scaling the meta ball in object mode. The negative option controls whether the influence is positive or negative. So if I scale the duplicate to a smaller size, choose negative. When I move the duplicate inside the influence of the original meta ball, notice that the smaller meta ball indents the larger one. The hide option can hide the selected meta ball and reveal what is hidden. If I add a third meta ball and then select the second one, and choose hide, I can now see the section of the third meta ball that was previously hidden. Now I'll get the meta ball set up for a simple motion graphic animation. This is based on a technique I learned from Default Cube. I'll be using a cube as the parent object. I'll also add a meta ball, which is what will be animated. I select the meta ball and shift select the cube. Using control P, I parent the objects. Select the cube and under object properties tab, under the instancing panel, I'll choose vertices. This means there will be an instance of a meta ball on each of the cube's vertices. If I select the meta ball and the outliner, I can now scale them down so I can see them individually. Under the shading workspace, I apply the material I made earlier in the tutorial. I'll be using the try lighting add-on to quickly set up a three-point lighting system for the animation. I add a plane. And then I scale it up, and this will be my background. In edit mode, I extrude the two back edges and add a bevel. In object mode, I right click the plane and choose shade smooth and then add a dark material. Open the properties tab with N and under the view tab I choose lock camera to view. I then go into my camera view and set up the scene.
Now that the lighting and camera are set, I can begin the animation. Under the Output Properties tab, I change the end frame to 180 and the frame rate to 60. This will give me a 3 second animation. Select the cube and I add a Displace modifier which will be driven by a texture. I add a new texture and choose Voronoi for the type under the Texture tab. I can change the size of the texture to make a smoother or more chaotic animation. I'll change this to 3 to make the animation smoother. I'll now add an empty. This can be used as the object for the modifier. I'll move it to the side where I can see it. I select the cube and back in the modifier tab I change the coordinate to object which tells the coordinate system to use the object when retrieving values. For object I select empty and when I move the empty around the meta balls move around the cube because the texture is being moved. If I increase the size of the texture and then move the empty, notice that the meta balls are now interacting. I can access even more controls by selecting the cube, opening the texture tab. And under the colors panel, I can change the brightness, which will determine how close or how far away the meta balls are from one another. The lower the number, the darker the texture becomes, and the closer the meta balls will be for me. So for me, I'll be using 0.9. If I change the contrast to 3 and then move the empty, you can see how chaotic the animation is compared to a contrast of 1. I select the cube and on frame 1, I add a keyframe for rotation. On frame 180, I rotate the cube around the z-axis 360 degrees and add a keyframe for rotation. Now to prevent any off motion, I use the T key to open the interpolations options and I choose the linear interpolation. The last thing I need to do is hide my cube then under the Object Properties tab, under the Instancing panel, I uncheck Viewport and Render Boxes. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Have a good day.